Or can I make a pitch about sort of what you're going to do today? I don't care if you compete in this competition. You all need to be able to do this. Like, this is non-negotiable. <laughs> I don't even know how to say this strongly enough. Like, I went to a UX design um, meeting yesterday, the club that meets on campus. Um, my niece was presenting at it. And the recruiter was there and she said, you need to be able to tell your story in three minutes or less. In fact, ideally in 90 seconds or less. And it's hard in our field to do that. I've been doing it as I've been changing careers and positions and people are like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, well, how long do you have? So we we need to be able to say, tell the story about our research, about our field, about who we care about three minutes or less. So take this seriously, even if this is not a competition you're officially going to compete in, participating and back to you. All right, yeah, I second all of that because you should be able to talk about what you're doing, whether that's research, project, class stuff, or anything, and be able to explain it to others. That's just a good skill to have. And that's what a three-minute thesis is. So first we're gonna explain what the three minutes three-minute thesis competition is, 3MT, and then how you can be involved in it. And then we'll have some time at the end where we'll have people who have done the 3MT before talk about their experience preparing for it, what they learned, and encourage you to do it. And then you'll also have time to start thinking about a topic that you would want to do for this event. And more details on that later because the McKay School of Education is still picking their date, but it will be either at the end of January or the beginning of February. So we're having you think about it now because we need to have our department one a few weeks before that. So that's going to be January 15th. And since we have the holidays coming up and everything, you're probably not going to be working on it a lot then start working on it and thinking about it now, and then you can just pick up with the start of the semester. So, so we're we trying to get me to join the program, but it's not going. Okay. Um, so the, the university is, has done 3MT for a long time and the college does 3MT. Our department, as far as I know, we started last year was the first year. And the reason that I wanted to start this was because in the humanities school, um, there's too many departments to have everybody who wants to sign up, sign up. And so each department does their own three minute thesis and then their top one or two move on to the college level and et cetera. And they actually give their winners at their department level a bonus at Christmas time. Wow, right? So I thought we can do this in our department and it would be so fun. So we started last year. So 3MT is three minute thesis and actually graduate students who receive funding from department, you, um, I like how you worded this, are invited to participate. That's actually the process. <laughs> yeah. I think Dr. Leary has said in the past, you have to do at least one if you are paid by the department or by this college. Um, so do 3MT or the poster conference, both are awesome. Today we're talking about 3MT. So BYU did not invent this. Did you know that? It was actually invented in Queensland at the university. And then everybody else thought it was so cool, they adopted it. And now it's done all over the world at a lot of different universities. And like Stephanie said, it's really important to be able to present your research or your projects or whatever you're working on in a way that is quick and clear and interesting that will pull other people in. Uh, this is some advice. Is this from grad studies? Yeah. Avoid discipline specific jargon and be presented so a lay audience can understand. You want other people to understand what you're doing and what you're talking about. You advance. Okay, so looking out, who attended last year? Do not presenting, but who attended last year? Berenice, did you get to come last year? I think so. You don't remember? You did? I, I went to the final one at the Varsity Theater. Oh, the final one, not the department one. What was it like at the at the university level? It's fun because you got to hear about all kinds of things, you know, like what's going on in engineering and humanities and it's great. Thank you. Did anybody else in here get to come to the department one last year? I don't remember. No, oh, I did. I didn't come to the department one. I didn't make it to the college one. But you came to the department yeah. one. Yeah. And at the end of the department one, what did you think, like, did you leave feeling like that was dumb or a waste of time? Oh, or no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, can you click it? The feedback that I got from people 
Well, let's have Pam, you've presented, so hold on. So people at the end of the day last year told me this was the most fun seminar of the semester because everybody got up, well, not everybody, but a lot of people got up and presented what they'd been doing. And it was so interesting to hear about everybody's research and everybody's projects. And it was so exciting. And they really felt a really strong sense of community and people were supporting each other and cheering for each other. And they said, this was a really fun day. And it was, it really developed some of the, the feelings of togetherness for us. It again, Pam, you participated last year. Um, you have a way to can Pam share? Yeah, I can unmute her or she's unmuted. She's good. Okay. I can just make a comment. <laughs> you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so I actually went to the department, to the college, and to the university one. So I went to all three. Um, just the department and the college one is a participant. And then I went to cheer on Stephanie West at the college wide one. Um, and it was awesome. I, I was really nervous. And I think every, I was nervous for the department one and the college one, even though I was talking to my friends about something that I've been studying for two years, but it was, it was really good practice for me to get over that nervousness and be able to just do it. Thank you. That's exactly what we heard last year, too. Most of the people said this was good practice for my thesis defense or my portfolio defense. It was good practice. So this is a good activity. Everybody should want to participate in this. Do I have any more slides? Oh, yeah. Everyone, please participate in our Department 3MT. It's good professional development for you. In our actual day that we will be presenting and doing all the stuff is January 15th. And then our top ones, I think we're going to encourage to go on to the college level, and then whoever wins at the college level goes on to the university level. Does this make sense so far? Okay. When you say win, what do they win? Hmm. Uh, Depends on the place you're presenting at. We'll talk about at what the college are. level. They have cash prizes. At the university level, they have cash prizes. In our department, uh, we do not have cash prizes. Uh, <laughs> they're good prizes, but people want swag. So, I think Haley is next, and she's going to talk about her experience last year. Yeah, um, <laughs> advance your slides for you. Yeah, that would be great. You want to play anything right now? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I did 3MT last year. I was doing some research with um, the CPSC department. Um, I'm a design student, but I actually was getting internship credit for doing research with them. Um, so this was my poster. Um, and I saw somewhere that it's actually good to have like less information on your poster. You don't want to like distract from what you're saying. Um, so that's kind of what I was going for. I was doing research um, with, the, with the lab that I was part of to see um, if using virtual reality with children with autism was um, a good option. So um, when I was preparing for the, th the Department 3MT, I didn't really know where to start, like at all. Like I, I'd heard examples of three, three MT, um, like speeches, but I wasn't really sure, sure where to start with my own. So, in advance, uh, I used ChatGPT, <laughs> so it did not write it for me. Um, if you want to click, this is the prompt that I gave it. Sorry, I'm just gonna read it. Um, my grad department is holding a three MT competition, and I'm planning on participating. I've chosen a topic. It'll be focused on the research I'm helping with exploring using VR as an educational tool for kids with autism, but I'm not sure where to start when it comes to the presentation. Ask me questions guiding me through the process of drafting a script for my presentation. Don't write a script for me. Instead, give me prompts to answer that will help me construct my script. At the end of our conversation, I should have a draft that I can start practicing. Um, and it was super nice because it, it gave me questions and I answered them um, and it gave me suggestions of, oh, like maybe you could start with a story to like hook people in. And um, and that was super helpful. And I, I was like, OK, here's my script. Can you give me some feedback? And that was super helpful as well. Um, and then what I did is I worked on memorizing my script. I did end up using flashcards, so I didn't have it completely memorized. Um, but those just had like points. Um, it wasn't just like the full script written out. Um, and I practiced in front of a mirror and with a timer to make sure that it was under three minutes. Um, so if you want to click. Um, so these are just some of the questions it asked me. Um, 
to start with, what is the core research question or problem you're addressing? Try to set it up in one to two sentences. What makes this an important or compelling problem? Um, and so it, it was super helpful for me to use ChatGPT. So I recommend it. Um, don't have it write it for you, but it can help you. Um, and then I actually have not seen this, but this was the feedback that I got. Um, I, I got really helpful feedback. I didn't end up um, doing the college 3MT because I forgot to uh, apply in time, but I kind of wish that I did because I, I did really well in the department 3MT you can read it in. Um, I got an average score of 58.3 and the top score was 58.66. So I got second place. That was my prize. <laughs> it's still proudly displayed in my apartment. So, um, but yeah, it was it was my first year of the program. I was actually the only first year student that participated, um, and we would love for more first year students to feel comfortable. Um, even if you're not doing research, if you're doing design, there's still things that you can share um, that we would love to hear from. So. And I remember when we were announcing the winners, and we announced Haley. Everybody was like. Oh! Because she's a first sem like a first year student who's not doing anything yet. She did such an amazing job and everyone was so excited. Anything you wanna have questions for me? I think Dr. McDonald's up next. Oh, very new. That's the question that so if I have no research, like how do I just create one real quick and then <laughs> <laughs> the end where we can talk specifically about what can you do? What research are you doing or what projects are you working on? We can get to that. Just to clarify, it doesn't have to actually be your thesis. It can be anything you're working on. This is not what Haley is doing to graduate department. This was just an internship that she did. Okay, Dr. McDonald. All right, so we uh, just said we should rename it three minutes something. So three mess is yeah. <laughs> how you should be thinking about this, right? So um, Allison asked me just to talk. I've judged the competition at the college level before. And she wanted me just to share a little bit about what that process is like and what you can expect. Um, they do change, oh, go ahead. It's the same judging criteria for the department one. As they do at the college one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so you should all the way through, and I think the university one is, is also the same. Uh, they do modify the questions slightly from year to year. And so the questions that I'll show in a second may not be the exact like prompts that the, the the committee has this year, but they're essentially the same, right? These are the areas that they care most about. Um, before looking at those, though, I do want to emphasize you are in front of sympathetic audiences when you present these uh, theses. Uh, the The department committee is drawn from, I think, are you doing just faculty this year? Or, so faculty in the department, college is faculty in the college, university is university faculty and at every level they they want you to succeed right and that's not always the case when you present your research in other places um there there may be sometimes adversarial uh, circumstances but that's not the case here they want you to succeed the hardest part about judging is that we're judging right we, we know we have to rank people but there is a deep level of admiration for everyone who um, is going through this process recognizing how hard it is or many of you never having stood up and talked about scholarly things before it, 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 the, it all of the judges universally when we get together and talk about it we i mean that was the first thing that we said is that this is like heroic on the parts of these students to do that so whatever you do to muster up the energy and and maybe courage and grit to do it do it i think that you'd um you'd be really happy with yourself if you go through it I've heard you say something before to the effect that this is a safe place to fail. So if you yes. present and you yeah. feel like you're a failure, it's not a failure. We're safe people. We will support you and coach you. And and really, I mean, it's not even a failure because you got up to do it, right? And so in, in lots of ways, the first person to get something out there wins. So the first person to get your ideas out there, you win. And sure, sometimes it's a little confusing and sometimes it's not as smooth as you want it to be. And sometimes you go over time and that's all okay because there will always be another chance to talk with somebody. And so this experience is just a chance to help you practice those experiences, Dr. Rich. What you're saying is reminds me of uh, one of our students, uh, when he first came, uh, wanted to participate in some of these presentation competitions for an idea he had. Uh, it wasn't the 3MT, but it was uh, other competitions at the, the uh, business school, mm -hmm. yeah. the university. Program. And it was really good. Uh, his first presentations, he gave 
just to us, they need practice. Yeah. And um, they needed a lot of feedback, right? And it was good because we gave him feedback and now he's he's gone through because he went and put himself out there. Right. He was able to make a lot of changes before it got to the actual competition. And he ended up, has, has done really well with that. Every time that he's presented, yeah. he's been able to get his feedback and make it better each time. So As much experience as you can get in front of people who want you to be successful, the better off you'll be in the long run. And we all want you to be successful. Let's look at some of the specific criteria now. There are three general buckets. We'll just kind of look at them one at a time and, and talk about them. I don't know that I'll read all the questions. Just take a, a second and glance over those questions, if you would. Um, and uh, first, I mean, if there, are, if you want to ask questions about what the intent behind these criteria are, maybe we start there. So as you look at these, are, are there just any maybe clarifying issues you'd like to be? So it's solely a presentation. There's no questions to answer about it. It's just you stand up, you're done. It is three minutes. You stand up and you talk for the three minutes. And you can have a supplementary slide, um, but the bulk of it really should be you presenting. There's no question and answer. Yeah. Other questions maybe to clarify what we're talking about here. So this is the comprehension so really, this is focused around, um, is it understandable, right? So uh, the three questions, do you provide enough background information? Are you describing the core thing, whatever that is, whether that be a research finding or a designed intervention or your research plan? So even if you're not to the stage of having findings yet, you can still present your plan. Um, and then the clear and logical sequence. All three of these things are important, right? I mean, if you just jump into the deep end of the pool, lay audiences just may not have enough background, or really any audience outside of your research team may not have the background. Are you explaining things understandably for a lay audience, for people who are reasonably informed? I mean, this is a university audience, and so you can expect them to uh, understand basic logic and have a, a decent vocabulary. We're not asking you to really go down to like the third grade level, but... You should avoid industry-specific jargon. You should avoid um, acronyms uh, unless you define them up front. You know, you want to save a second or two here and there and use an acronym for that. You know, make sure you define it up front. Um, and then also, is it just structured? Does it have a clear beginning, middle, and end? And all the pieces, do they line up and fit together and clearly build on each other in some fashion? I mean, you can obviously create a compelling structure in lots of different ways. It doesn't have to be chronological. It doesn't have... There's all kinds of ways, right? There's narrative structures, there's chronological structures, there's logical structures, there's all kinds of structures, but is it clear the people you're presenting to what kind of structure you're following? Any last questions about the comprehension criteria here? Dr. How Allen. How long does your research need to be? Does it have to be final and you're presenting the final result? Okay. Can you be in the midst of it? You can be in the midst of it and presenting preliminary findings. You can be uh, early on and present the literature of why this is a compelling problem, right? I mean, if you have a three-minute compelling idea, that's really all it really needs to be. If you're in the beginning stages of a design project that's meant to have an effect, you can, you know, if you've scoped it out, you can present that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So it is design and thesis. It doesn't have to be a research thesis that can yeah. be designed. So when you get to the college and university, they're going to expect you to use researchy kind of terminology. So you may do a, need to do a translation, right? But that shouldn't stop you. Ask your advisor to help you make that translation from the designy language to maybe the kind of language that the college or university faculty may be looking for, but it's possible. We've done it before, right? Haley did it last year, right? And it's definitely possible. Well, I moved on. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. So this is engagement criteria. Take a second, look over these four questions. Thoughts or questions about what's being looked for here in engagement? Abby. What assumption should we make about the audiences, either their background, their information? Like, I guess, what should we know about yeah. the people that we're speaking to for yeah. the a generally informed university audience. So it's students and faculty engaged in studies, right? And so um, a lot of them, I mean, a lot of them will be the faculty advisors of the students who are presenting or their friends. Um, I don't think the 3MT is undergraduate. Is it undergraduates? 
because I think it's just grad students. And so you can expect them to have a basic understanding of research methods, research methodologies, right? You don't have to backtrack all the way and explain the research process. Um, if you're using basic statistics, you can probably expect them to at least have an understanding of those things. If there are advanced statistical methods you're using, you may want a quick definition or a brief explanation of that as part of it. But these, these are informed, this is a group informed about the general pursuit of scholarly knowledge in some fashion. Does that help, Abby? There was another hand in the back. Paula, was it you? Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering what the uh, rubric is that they just, just use for- This is the rubric. Yeah, these are the questions. Yeah. So the previous slide, this slide, and then the next slide. Example in, in the next person's part where it shows her rubric. With shows how it's laid out. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. So here, what we're really looking at, like, is this a compelling presentation, right? So even wanting to know a little bit more, answer the question, have a complete presentation, but especially if this is a complex issue that you're studying, don't feel the need to be truly comprehensive. Always leave your audience wanting a little bit more, right? It's a good thing if they come up to you and want to ask you additional questions when you're done. Number two is kind of dual purpose. Lots of the times, I mean, we have to find a targeted, focused issue to study, and there can be a temptation there to kind of trivialize it or minimize it, but don't. This is exciting. You're devoting, if not your life, at least a significant portion of your graduate education to these ideas. Talk about them as if they're exciting, because they are exciting. But at the same time, these are not necessarily, you're not, you know, discovering the theory of general relativity, probably in your research. And so don't make it bigger than it is either. That's the opposite problem is if you oversell it, it can kind of also, it doesn't, it's not a very compelling presentation. People kind of sense that you're more marketing and selling than describing your research. So avoid that as well. Be enthusiastic, capture their attention. And uh, Haley talked about, you know, compelling ways to possibly do that. Stories, surprising statistics, contradictions, um, especially layperson's contradictions that you're going to resolve through your, your explanation. All of those things might be great ways to capture attention. Any other questions? All right, just one more criteria then. This is the communication criteria. It's a little bit longer, so take a second and look this over. Any questions here or things that you'd like clarified? Dr. Allen. I think that it's great that, that Haley practiced in front of a mirror. Yeah. Super painful, but very helpful is to record yourself. Like just to just to put your phone right up in front of you, to record yourself, watch yourself, laugh, cry, do it again until you get better and better at it. And watch yourself maybe with a sympathetic audience, a roommate, a spouse, a sibling, someone who can maybe point out some things that you aren't seeing in the video as well. Yeah, and it it can hurt, but it's helpful. Let's get over everyone. Everyone sounds terrible when they watch themselves, right? Because you you know you sound different in your head than how you sound to other people. And that's okay. Just get over it, right? Um, be brave. Be brave. Yeah. <laughs> Any other clarifications here or questions you'd like to have answered? Yes. So you said that the PowerPoint slide is optional. Do most people do a slide? Um, most people do. I don't know if it's truly optional. You get one, though, is what I was saying. And and what I, I think I'd said is that you're the presentation, not the slide. So the slide is enhancement to what you're presenting. It shouldn't take over <laughs> the message in and of itself. But I do think the slide is required. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So... Uh, would yes. the slide then be static, like, or could you have animation on it, or do you typically just like one? Just one slide, no transitions, just something that is up there for the three minutes. And from what I remember last year, no music, no nothing. Uh, it's yeah, just, no, just, it's just like a poster. Yes, yeah, think of it. Yeah. yeah, think of it like a poster, not a presentation that you can go <laughs> through. And you saw Haley's was an example, right? Very simple. Right, a couple of images, kind of a compelling picture of a person there with a you know VR headset and someone working with them, and then some prompts 
that I assume Haley you used as you were walking through your presentation to focus on various parts of your message. Um, yeah, so uh, this, this is, I think, a very compelling, very appropriate example of the kind of slide. You'll see Stephanie's was a little, had a little bit more information on hers. Maybe we could go, let's just go to that one just for a second and look at it. Stephanie couldn't be here, so we're talking yeah. about her things for her. So, you know, there's a little more information here, right? But it's still not overwhelming. It still looks more like a poster that you might see at a conference than a presentation. I'm going to steal Lily's thunder, but this is the one she did for the department 3MT. Here's the one she did, okay. redid for the college one after she got feedback from the department. Right. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. Let's go back. Let's go back. Just make sure there aren't any other questions about the criteria yeah. here. Any other things we want to talk about here? Yeah. Uh, it says uh, on each element of their presentation, what elements are you doing? Well, that would be like your structure, right? So like your, your background section. Um, the research question itself, your your preliminary findings and implications, right? That each of those might be an element of the presentation, but it's kind of how you structure it is how you would think about the various elements. <laughs> Look people in the eye, be enthusiastic, have a good stage presence. Practice helps with that as well. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to suggest. Oh, um, you get three minutes, right? So scripting is your friend in this case um do what you do what you need to do to make sure you get it all out and don't improvise i mean if you can't memorize it fully i think Haley had a great suggestion of having some note cards to guide you through the points but when you're up there don't improvise because improvising is going to eat away out of that 180 seconds a lot faster than you think it will I think that's all I've got then, unless there's any last things. We can talk for a minute during lunch if there's anything else that comes up. So we'll turn it back to you. We'll come up for you later. Yeah. Stephanie West isn't here, so I'm just going to kind of walk through her process of doing it. So this is from when she did it in the department. Her average score was 53 and got very specific feedback from the faculty. Those are the ones who are judges. I'm going to interrupt. I think I took out the actual score sheet. So if you want to see that score sheet, I can show you later. I took it out. So the one circled is what, and then also feedback from the peers, because us, the audience, ones who aren't presenting at that time, will also be filling out the same sheet that the judges are doing and putting scores in each of the categories, and then also providing like general feedback as part of it. But only the faculty, well, never mind, we'll get into that later. So yeah, this was what Stephanie had for her slide for the department. And then based on the feedback that she received, she then changed it to this when she did the college for MT. So you can see it was kind of different before that one. So you can put more text on it if you want to. It's just going to stay there the whole time. But do realize that you're not, you shouldn't be reading straight off the screen. You should be presenting to your audience. So maybe your audience can look at it, glance at it. Maybe you can point out a part and look at that. But you should not, this should not be the basis of what you're presenting. One of my feedbacks that I got last year was don't even point at the slide because I went into teacher mode and I'm like pointing and they're like, no, this isn't, you're just presenting. You're not interacting with the slide. That's a dictionary though. It should open. Did you do the right click and tell it to open in a new tab? You go, you go sit over there and I'll do it. And you can point to things. Yeah. I will point to things. Which not for three MT. Okay. This is her. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is her outlining what she's going to talk yeah, about. Okay. So the problem. This was her first draft. Research. This is what she presented at the department three MT. And then she got feedback. Yeah, you don't have to script it out completely like this, but it does help some people organize their thoughts and also so you can start timing it, seeing which parts maybe you're spending too much time on and which ones you want to focus on more so that you're able to cover all the different parts so that presenting your thing makes sense. I laughed when um, Dr. McDonald said you don't have to do it at a third grade level, but she literally did translate it to a sixth grade reading level because that's most people, there's statistics about that. 
um, she presented it at a sixth grade level. This is another draft down here. So this is like her third draft. Another Girls iteration. School. This is another draft. For so she took the, the college level one really seriously. Finish present. So this is what she ended up actually using after going through all those different drafts and trying out, seeing what worked and what didn't, not just from the department one, although that was a big component, but even practicing after, because there is a space of time between the department one and the college one, and then eventually the university if you make it to that level. And so you're able to keep building and keep refining throughout that time. Then Stephanie placed first at the college level and competed at the university level. And also, if you want to see actual examples of people doing 3MTs, the BYU Grad Studies website has a section on 3MT, and you can watch them because they recorded them. So if you want to see, like, okay, how do they actually talk about it? Is it this website? How right do they here? present? Yes. And we can send this. Yeah, out. we'll send it when we send the other part that we're going to. Have we ever won at the university level? Dr. Rich? Mm -hmm. And I think they're discussing. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, this could be the year. So that's why we need all of you to present so that we can send people to the university level. Because the work that we do is important and we want people to know about it. And besides it just being a good opportunity for professional development and learning how to talk about what you're doing in a concise way, it does help because then other people learn about the work we're doing and about IP and T. It's a good opportunity to advertise our program. Okay. Next, we're going to have some planning time. Okay, I can talk about this. So we have about 10 to 15 minutes left of seminar, but we're not done. We want you to either sit with people at your table or scooch together a couple of tables and start talking about in like one minute, here's some things I'm doing that I could maybe do for the presentation. And someone else can say, oh, that's interesting. And you talk, talk, talk. Then faculty members can walk around and help generate ideas, but start thinking, what can you present at our department through your thesis? And then I'm gonna leave this slide up. Please participate. Here's the QR code. You can sign up or you can type in that little address, but that takes you to a form, a Google form for signing up to participate in our department 3MT. And so we will keep collecting people to participate until the first week in January. And, um, at some point, maybe towards the middle of December, we will send out an email that's like, does anyone need, does anyone want to get together to practice or to review slides together or anything like that? If so, we'll do what we can to help you prepare for our Department 3MT. And then on January 15th, we will have the main event. <coughs> Questions? Okay, so everybody find some people to talk with and start brainstorming and sign up to participate. Yes. Do we have to have a title when we sign up or you just no. put in your name? It's your name. What about the preliminary abstract? I mean, I do a lot of research, so yeah. Show you. Yeah. Any presentation, study, it's a moral project. Several yeah, uh, in my teaching preliminary yeah. abstract, that's it. All right, Five. sweet. It's just a few key words. Oh, yeah, I'm studying basic education, learning is important, agency and creation. Enough to talk. Carries. We're talking. You don't need a lot of side projects. I'm studying for the in the church, study murder. I guess that's a great I don't know. No, it's a big I don't know. the directions. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just that yeah. Yeah. Things, yeah. Things, yeah. things were more complicated. It's just of all of my Anyway, I Ready? So, Moral aspect. Right now, it's a by the way, So a lot of training. That is something like it's very specific, actually, with finishing, yeah. right? So, yeah. It's nice, you know, but my master's in public administration, and we just like three weeks. But I think is really is theoretical. And so I think this, that question extremely frank. Because how this I just lazy to make That's not the idea. Take three minutes. I to be in our Sometimes there's no solution. Yeah, and we need it to back up. Like they're kind of just, it's not all the data, it's just like, some ways we can. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Just like, I'm like, I'm just like, I'm 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 like, there's like, there's like, all these, like, some main issues, and I'm like, how you code How do I exactly right? Okay, so yeah. I think do a little like trying to be yeah, yeah. 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 some of us, right? The project research but so the process of how did that <laughs> yeah, so. broke and I could uh, the writing for this it's something that makes sense. How do I do it? How do I do it? How do the guidelines. Like you have a So anyway, I have a hard time like saying things for instance. Now I'll tell you the beginning of it. 
So we have most single writers. There's lots of us to do this week. I'm the test. You just let me know. But there's also a lot of confusion that we're doing it because national working is kind of discretion right you're not in the program but still funny though i mean i i Next research was we wanted to find out what actually that's encouraging and students enjoy it and how does the relationship and the strategy so when you how do the leading out person there just learn about assessment best at all? I got to know How do you? Need more time? No, no, no. Got it. So, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also need to go to the top of the page. I want to check it out. I just want to like 10 minutes. Can I get to the end? Oh, sorry. Can I wrap this up and then I'm still keep talking? No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> Do you know that I love her? She loves me. I would live in Wall if I could live in Wall. <laughs> Okay, let's wrap up. Um, we would love to have you continue talking about this through lunch, um, but we are going to officially wrap the discussion part up and invite you. We will have a traditional discussion board this week for those of you who are taking the class for credit. So there are three that are assigned to do the questions, and those will be uploaded by the end of the day. First thing tomorrow, we'll have a traditional discussion board um, on it. But thank you for participating. Thank you for considering this. This is to be a really great opportunity and I encourage at least at the department level all of you to participate. Um, two things. Peter asked me to mention, which is very funny, to promote the class that I'm doing next semester. Um, its short version is called Peak Performance, although there's a lot longer title. <laughs> I think it's pre Preparing for Professional Peak Performance. Um, I could, couldn't help myself. <laughs> so what I want you to know is that um, you're welcome to join. That would be a great experience. What we're trying to do is to do all the things that all the people that I talk to in industry wish that they had had. I've run the agenda. I've run the outline. I've run the title and all things through a lot of friends that are in the field. And they're like, wow, these are the things you need to add. And so it's all about everything from how do you find out what your strengths are and how to present those to others and then how to get a job and perform at your peak. So I hope that this little mini 3M will be um, a precursor to that, but you're welcome to join that if that's something that's of interest to you. We're gonna have a clicking point. I'll say that, and then let's have some lunch and um, 